Welcome back to Game Devs Complete Games, where we play games about game design. Yeah. We're back with more Link to the Past. With Chris and Eddie. With Chris, with Chris and Eddie. <laughs> hey. <laughs> that's Chris. <laughs> I'm Chris. I'm that's, Eddie. That's Eddie. Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, <laughs> also, why are there landmines everywhere in the desert? I don't. Was there a... Well, actually, there was a war. Mm. They start off the game in the uh, the like the looping cutscene in on the title screen. They're like, indeed, there was a great war, and a, a great evil named Ganon was sealed away. See, it does happen. Yeah, well, that's what I was talking about. That's why I was surprised it didn't make that sound on the wall that didn't have the the explodable thing. Mm, maybe you're wrong. No, I'm right. <sighs> da, 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 da. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to talk? Oh, I guess he's not going to give you anything. He's not going... You want me to talk to him? Nah, nah. Okay. He's going to be like, Oh, you found the book! I Good can job, Link! if you want. No. Right, no. Yeah. In the uh, I really want to set footage. a bomb so I can get it and go upstairs and get a thing. Because that's what I want. I want some damn bombs. Because I want to go upstairs. Upstairs? Upstairs are the place. Of that place? Yeah. No, Eddie, you're you're gonna get bombs in the dungeon. You're, you're fine. Uh, no, I want bombs. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! There's oh nothing god. in that that oh, bombable. Oh my god! Oh my god! Eddie, shit! I'm so sorry. You should have listened to me. So in the corrupted footage, we talked about how the vultures terrify you. Yeah, they terrify. Which I think they're amazing. Sure. Um, because they fit that rule of of how enemies move and how like they use movements to, uh change up the the monster behaviors yes. or like the challenges in the game they did do a wonderful job on that but and they it's, still terrify it's, me. Well, it's stressful because it, it's that anticipation of like when will they strike yeah they're also just creepy they're just creepy as hell they're not that creepy and also i love this opening with the book and it's for this dungeon it's just fun. well first uh, well, what never mind it's too late to open the way to go forward oh. make your wish here and it will be granted He's, he's making his wish. Please, please open. That's not at all what the music sounded like. I know. <laughs> I can improvise. <laughs> you should read the tablet again without the book, though. Like this, this is so. This is the garbly yeah. gook that the uh, tablet actually looks like in mm -hmm. Hylian. Yeah, it's just a bunch of nonsense, really. I mean, like, it's like there's no way any of that could actually translate to what I mean. It looks like hieroglyphs. Yeah, almost. Yeah. But it's really cool. I just love the book for that aspect right there. I just yeah. love it. It's just so yeah. cool. Yeah. But this way we know, though, anytime we see that, that like, strange text, we know that that book is yeah. where we what we need to use. I just think it's lovely that one of the temples, you just, like, just need an ancient, nah, ancient tome to get within. I mean, yeah. I guess it makes sense, right? Like... For an item that doesn't have a heavy impact, um, but they wanted this item to be a thing, yeah. I think it's important that they have things in the light world in the beginning of the game, before we even go into the dark world, that it has a function. Uh, that way it kind of has this like presence throughout the game and doesn't feel like it was, I don't know, like tacked on at the end. Yeah. I guess like you could argue, well, yeah, but instead it feels like wasted space. I'm like, ah... Uh... I don't know. Not really. I'd rather it feel really like wasted feel space like wasted than tacked space. on. Yeah. It does not feel like wasted space to me. Just saying. You can also, use the ice rod. Ice rod, motherfucker. Oh, dang. Oh, you just kill him. Yeah. Does he, like, drown in his own sand pit? No, he's, he freezes. Eddie, Eddie, you're doing the same thing you did last time. What's up? Go get the... This, they want you to go in this room first. It's right there. Right in front of your path. This room? That room. Okay. <laughs> we had... But that, there, there's a what? there's a key in here. I didn't do it this way before, though. Yeah, you you like went around and and like went the wrong way. No. Well, you went you found yourself outside. Oh, wait, you know what well I want before first? you needed to. What I want first? I don't want anything you just told me first. I'm not sorry. I don't want any of that stuff. Hold on. What I want first As is the heart what piece. I want first. You want the heart piece. I want that heart piece. I mean, that's cool. Yeah, right? I wouldn't argue with that. Yeah, you shouldn't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm excited to talk about this dungeon, though, because they make some choices that are kind of unconventional as far as Zelda goes. Oh, yeah. Um, which is maybe a good and a bad thing. I don't really know if it's bad. Um, it's just... 
it's weird looking at the history of Zelda and kind of how they've iterated the design, their level design in particular. That's an interesting thought. Hmm. I'm glad you feel that way. <laughs> you think it's different from what they usually do? Well, I guess I can talk about it before we hit the room, um, but they use trap rooms in this dungeon. Ah, uh, yes. Um, which isn't totally uncommon in the Zelda series. I I'm pretty sure at least some of that exists in uh, Ocarina of Time, but they've been slowly moving away from it. Um, but the reason why I think it's interesting is because there are other dungeons later on in this game that actually require a key, and it still is a trap room. You just don't get anything out of it. <laughs> um, and so the keys in this huh. game are... Ooh, that just does not work. <laughs> Keys, keys in Zelda is, is like a scarce and holy resource, right? Like, mm -hmm. you never really want to waste it. Right. Um, and so the trap rooms kind of leave the player feeling like they wasted a valuable resource. Right. Um, so the trap rooms, I think, are a byproduct of traditional adventure games, especially games like D&D, &D, for example, where, like, trap rooms are just an obvious dungeoning, uh, part of the dungeoning experience. Right. And something I like about this room... Going along with like, it's kind of a trap. It's not really a trap. It's just kind it's, of like it's a trick. It's it's a trick, and I just like it because like oh, everything that I've learned so far up to this point is I light these and something appears <laughs> in the middle. Nothing happens. Just like but they do this twice. But, they do but, this twice in this dungeon actually. Yeah. Uh, where they're like I tricked you. It's just it's not it's so what playful. you thought. It's so fun. I love it. I, I like though that they kind of build up those expectations and then yeah. they tear them down like ah not everything's what you think. Yeah, it could be different at a moment's notice. I don't think it does a good job at like dissuading the player from doing things. Oh no, I, mean, I don't think it wanted to like dissuade them from doing anything. I mean, I guess it, it's a little confusing, right? Because you light those torches and you go, well, was that for nothing? Is there nothing in here? And you could leave that room not realizing realizing there's a button underneath it. Yeah. But I, I mean, so this is the trap room I was talking about. There, you oh, didn't that's need a, right. You didn't need a key to I get in here. I actually totally forgot that this was the trap room. I was like, yeah. what's in here? I'm there's like, there's oh, just right. nothing. There's nothing in here. <laughs> um, and I think there's some dungeons in the dark world that re oh, require a key. I could be wrong because I've been playing the randomizer, so everything I know is kind of scrambled. Right. Um, but I guess we'll 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 hit that road when we, or yeah. we'll get hit that point when we go down that road. Yeah. Ah, let's get out of get get out. Okay, that's just, that was weird. So, something that I pick up from the monster design in this dungeon is there's a lot of enemies that go up and down. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like vertical movement in the, under the ground and then above the ground, which I think is kind of cool. Yes. Because it's consistent, right, between, I guess, the like purple dudes, the orange dudes, and then the like wormhole guys. Yeah. And then you get the eye laser guys that have nothing to do with any of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but they're like... I don't know. I, I, li I like that that's like kind of the theme of this. Chris, there wasn't a key where you said there was a key. I didn't say there was a key in there. Yeah, you did. No, uh, I did not. It was just a map, I guess. But you're right <laughs> about the enemies there. Um, I guess it kind of changes when we get to the second half of this dungeon. Um, but even the monsters outside of the dungeon, the like little sand goons, yeah. the ones that pop up and go, I'm going to get you. Blah, 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 blah. I'm almost, I almost wonder why they don't have those guys in this dungeon. Because it seems like it would be a natural thing to add, right? I think, like... Maybe it's, like, a matter of too much? I think it would be too much, and I think they just wanted to introduce a new enemy with the, uh, slimy... Ouch! Octopus guys. Honestly. That's true. Yeah, the, the little, like, cylindrical dudes that pop up under the sand are kind of like the slimy tentacle dudes. Yeah. For this dungeon, anyway. Damn it. Yeah, that's a good point. Although they have more health in this dungeon, <laughs> but... And I just really think those, um, the sand golems is what I'm gonna call them. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Um, I just really. Oh yeah. Um, I just really think that the sand golems would be too much. I mean, that's fair. They're also kind of big, so I guess maybe the logic is like, there's just not enough space in this dungeon to make that work. Yeah. They're also kind of tough, actually, just because they, like, keep coming in there really quick. It's true. Oh, stop this. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Whoa. What do you think about those eye laser guys, the little turret dudes? Um, they're frightening and I dislike them a lot, <laughs> but they're easy to get around. 
I think from a, um, like, forcing the player to think about nicely done. Thank you. I, from an enemy design, or even, like, in because they're not even really an enemy, right? They're more of, like, an environment obstacle. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of smart because they sort of, like, draw the player's attention to it, which opens up the window to, like, have them fumble and then get hit by other enemies in the room. Yeah. Um, but I think they work naturally very, very well with pairing with different types of monsters in different dungeons, which is probably why they're such a reoccurring mechanic. Even across the other Zelda games... Because those eye laser dudes show up in just about everything. Yeah, and different forms of them, but they're everywhere. I mean, in, in other versions of Zelda, you can actually kill them. Um, in this one, I think there's just nothing you can do. Yeah. Ocarina of Time, you can kill them. And everything everything after Ocarina, you can pretty much kill them. I'm pretty sure that's correct. There might be one that they were kind of like, Not this time, ha ha ha, ha 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 ha. Sucks to suck, Link. Oh, give me that heart. You're doing it, buddy. Oh, cool. We still have about nine minutes on the clock, too, so... Sweet, I'm about to get there. Don't worry. There we go. That's what I want. If we're lucky, we might actually finish this dungeon that says... Boom. Oh, God. <laughs> if you don't die first, that is... Shut up. <laughs> I got this. I also can't die. Oh, have we talked about um, expectations of players backtracking yet? I think we talked about that in the corrupted footage. We did. Um, but I don't think we brought it up again. So there's there's sort of an expectation in at least in most Zeldas, but especially this one, mm -hmm. and especially, especially the first one, um, once you get items like this, the player will backtrack to areas that they've been previously. Oh, yeah. Not usually dungeons, just areas in the overworld. Mm -hmm. um, and open new secrets or passageways or, or what have you um so it, it's kind of operating under a similar design philosophy as metroidvanias um, whereas metroidvanias make that sort of the core level design um i think zelda sort of uses that as a secondary concept in its level design if that makes sense like it's it's constantly present but it's not the most important thing yeah um so i think it's interesting right because it sort of means that the, the game... This is the other room where they set up those fake torches that don't actually do anything. Mm -hmm. you, just have, you just think that they do, but there's nothing about Which that. sets it up for the player to get shot by this guy a lot, which yeah. is hilarious. I forget which player it is. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I think it's interesting, right? Oh, because all right, fine. In, in Zelda, in, the, in at least in this Zelda, it never really feels like mm. the backtracking is super boring and redundant. Um... And maybe that's just because the game's relatively small and it's kind of quick to travel to new places. Mm -hmm. um, whoa. Oh, sorry. Whoa. <laughs> oh, man. Seizure warning. All right. Here we and we're officially past the point in which the corrupted footage pooped out on us. Yay. Yay. Now Eddie doesn't know what he's doing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, what do you think about that with the expectation that players will backtrack from, from a design point of view? I am completely fine with it because in this game, uh, backtracking is like totally a fun thing. And it's just like, you want to remember where all those fun little things are. What do you think makes it fun though? Is it just a matter of like discovery? Yeah, it's, a, it's really just a matter of discovery in my opinion. Oh God, oh God. It's just, it's a matter of discovery and seeing like what those things were um, that you like passed up and just like, oh, I can go back and do this now. It's just, it's like exploration, you know? Yeah, I just I, thoroughly enjoy going back and seeing what was in that, and uh, behind that wall that I can totally shit. <laughs> I, I totally agree, right? I think one of the strongest um, elements that are present in in some of the best Zelda games is the the idea of discovery and exploration. Oh yeah, um, which is especially why I think so many people are excited about the newest Zelda, right? <laughs> because it's a pure exploration game. Yes. Um, with dungeoning mixed in, so it feels and like also cooking. Oh, well, there's a key there. Still pretty awesome. Um, but like the newest Zelda seems like it's based heavily on the original Zelda, where they're just like, just do things. Just do. Things. We're not gonna tell you how to do anything. You're just gonna figure it out on your own yeah. because you know, fuck you, player. Because you know, you're smart. You can do this. <laughs> you're smart. You can figure it out. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and, you know, some of the Zeldas kind of ebb and flow with wanting to stick to that theme. And I think A Link to the Past hit, like, sort of a perfect balance with that. Where there's not not absolute freedom, mm-hmm. um, but they still give you a lot of reason to want to explore it and, and kind of discover new things. Right. Um, and so, because of that, a lot of the rest of the game is built off of that, that idea. Um, and so, they do a really good job at, like keeping things interesting even when you're backtracking because you never really know what you're going to find whether it's a heart piece or in some cases things like the ice rod or in other cases like i don't know another bottle like (laughs) the items the rewards you get for it tend to feel pretty substantial and i think that's part of what makes it work so well yeah sticking in the doorway is usually the tactic i (laughs) stick to because half of the tiles can't even get you like if you don't even swing your sword, I'm I'm not gonna risk it. <laughs> I mean that's that's fair. But yeah. Also, a pretty creepy uh, little putt. Like not only like a, or a pretty creepy little encounter. Oh, the piles start flying at you. I love that. Uh, I know I know I love it too, but it's creepy. I think that's a D and D thing too. Probably. Um, which I don't know how much of Zelda was ever inspired by D and D because it's. A Japanese game mm-hmm. and D and D is very Western. Yeah. Um, but wait, I don't need another key. I also like how it, it forms a. Uh, huh? you, you already have the uh, the bus key. It forms yeah. a skull. But why do I? Why did I just get an extra key? Because that you need the key to get through there. But this is the boss room. No, that's well, it is, but. You oh, need that's it. it's, right. It's, I forgot about this. It's a normal lock. I it's forgot. not the boss lock. I forgot about this, though. Okay, so something I really love about this dungeon is how this entire time, you think you don't even... You think the secret's going to be killing this guy. Oh, yeah, you're like, oh, but, this dude... Wait, let me get to it. Let me get to it. Let me get there. Here. So, like, oh. Okay, well, lighting torches has never done anything in this dungeon before. I guess I... <laughs> yeah, they, they have we'll been tricking us this whole time. one more freaking time. Because that last room I was in, I thought it was a hallway where I had to light them all in time to get the key to appear at the end. I was like, oh, it didn't happen. Oh, it's in a pot. Okay, that's cool. Killing the enemy's going to open up this next part? No? <laughs> so now we do torches. Okay. And then when you do and the torches, sh-bam. you're just like, whoa! Like, oh my gosh! And arguably the torches, the thing that have not been doing anything this entire dungeon, do probably the coolest thing. This is another point in the randomizer where people get stuck really early, because if you don't have the, the, the lantern, yeah, you just can't get past this part. Oh my gosh, that sucks. I guess if you get the fire rod, you can, but I mean... Who knows where the fire rod is spawned to? Well, luckily, if you get the fire rod randomly, though, before this... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you're good. All right. You are ready we, for this we... battle? No. Still have two minutes. Can you beat him in two minutes? Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Not that we can't go we over. full health bar and two fairies, boy. Oh, dang. Uh... I love this boss. I, yeah. Maybe it's frustrating to a lot of people, but I always had a lot of fun. I feel like a badass when I'm fighting him because I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm dodging these pebbles and then I'm hitting you in the head. Because it's so hard to dodge them. It can be. If you don't understand their pattern, like, they start off shooting only diagonals. Um, and when I when Ouch. I first came back to this game... <laughs> so yeah. hard to dodge them. Ha, I got hit twice. <laughs> Fuck. When you first come back to this game, you forget everything, right? So, yeah. like... When I came back to it, I was like, ah, I don't know what's happening, and I got hit like crazy, oh, yes, and then I was like, oh wait, they're only diagonals. Stupid Chris. Oh shoot. Oh shoot. But my favorite is to like shoot an arrow and hit hit them in the head before they go back under the ground. Yeah, it's, like yeah. Yes. Oh wait, I'm gonna Precision see. Archer Master Chris. Oh. oh, you fucked up. Wait? Huh? Oh? Uh? Oh uh, no, hold on. Yeah, you did it. Look at that. Oh. Mm, so satisfying. Also, why was I standing in the path of the pebble? Uh, uh, well, because you're Eddie. So... Shut up, Chris. <laughs> so I, li- I like this boss, though, because it's... Uh, shoot. In, you know, instead of one big baddie... Well, I guess technically the first boss we fought was more than just one big baddie, too. Yeah. Um, Arguably, these guys are doing more and they're harder. <laughs> like, you could just spam true. arrows at the first one, at the it's first boss. And just get, that's what I did, and it took me a half a minute. Oh, wow. Oh, boom. You, like, kept them at equal health the entire time. That's pretty amazing. All right, now what's um, next? But, but I love it because <laughs> yeah. these guys stuck to the same theme as the majority of the monsters throughout the rest of the temple. 
Yeah. They were they're underground travelers. Mm -hmm. and they pop up and they shoot projectiles yeah. and stuff. It's like it. This whole dungeon felt so like cohesive. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good. And I'm glad that they had the pebbles shooting off that could damage you. Because honestly, if they weren't doing that, there's not a whole lot else this boss could really do to you. Yeah. Like, and and we, you killed it too fast, so we didn't get to see it. But the second form is the last guy he shoots. Uh, horizontal and vertical pebbles as well as the diagonals. That's right. Sorry. Too quick for y'all. Uh, you're just too good at this game, Eddie. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just... Oh. Jeez, let's wait till the third boss to see who is actually good at this game. Mm. Fun fact, I always thought that those pendants were uh, like bean sprouts as a kid. <laughs> I was like, it's like a, a, a budding sprout. Oh, great, now I can't unsee that. <laughs> Damn it, Chris. <laughs> Uh, it took me a long time to understand what a pendant was because I was not a smart kid. Oh, I knew what they were right away. You won the pendant of power. Your oh, goal of finding, finding three pendants is in sight. Thanks. Go for the last one. I was hoping we would do the whole thing together. Yeah, well... I know. You also didn't read that last one all the way through. Yeah, I did. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I like to leave you hanging. You're a butt. Oh, we are over time. I also like that the the entrance to that cave is kind of like the mouth of one of those worms. Yeah, I do. I love it. It's like, enter my mouth. Enter my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Crap, yeah. where do I go now? You go to the mountain, son. Oh, my goodness. To the mountain. Yeah, Death Mountain, here we come. Oh, boy, look at that glowing orb. Ooh, that glowing bean sprout. You know what I can't wait for? Eating bean sprouts? The moment of truth. Yeah. Although there's something really satisfying about playing the randomizer and going to the dark world with a green tunic and the level one sword <laughs> mm -hmm. being like, I should not be here. It's like, this is, I'm not ready I for am this. maddeningly unprepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's all uh, we have for this episode. Uh, question of the day, what did you think about Dungeon 2? Yeah, what did you think? Between the monster design and the uh, the level design. Mm-hmm. Between those two things. Monster design and level design. How did you like it? What kind of monster would you make? I don't think anyone can hear you anymore, I'm Eddie. I'm sorry. You're, like, talking up and away from the mic. I'm sleepy. Sleepy? No. I made you coffee. Mm. What is this? <laughs> if you've enjoyed the series, give me one of those thumbs ups yeah. because it helps us out and lets us know we're doing something right. Do that hopefully. Thing. And hopefully it means you like Eddie. What? What? Uh, anyway, we'll see you in the next episode. I. Oh, yeah. Uh, bye. Bye, Rookie. <laughs> <laughs>